Hi everybody, uh, today I'm going to be doing an ALS3 tutorial on how to use parameters in procedures and this is a reprisal of our ALS2 tutorial which is um, on the Duke uh, ALS workshop webpage on the tutorials page. So this is going to be a reprisal of that tutorial and I'm going to be doing it in ALS3 to show you guys the differences between how to use parameters in ALS2 and ALS3. So the first thing we're going to do is open a new grass world. And then we're going to add our characters to the world. So let's we'll go to Setup Scene. And Alice 3 doesn't have a kangaroo class, which is the main character in uh, the Alice 2 tutorial. So I'm going to instead use a bunny as our main character, because the bunnies hop just like kangaroos. So I'm going to go to Browse Gallery by Group, this tab right here, to get to the Animals folder. And here are the animals. So the first thing I'm going to add is a new bunny, and I'm going to drag him right into the center of the scene, right about there. I'll click OK. And I'm also going to add five more animals of various heights. I'm going to add a bison. I'm going to add a chicken, oh sorry, a camel first. Camel back there. I'm going to drag a chicken right here. A default chicken's fine. I'm going to get a gopher. Put him right here. And last thing I'm going to do is get a desert, yeah, the desert tortoise. Okay. And an important part of this tutorial that uh, we're gonna work on later is that we're gonna set, um, we're gonna say that the bunny can only jump one meter high, and so we're gonna use that rule to incorporate some if else statements later. Uh, but the first thing we want to do, so the entire goal of this world, anyways, is to get the bunny to visit all, of, to say hi, to greet all of his friends, and then either jump over them or go around them, depending on their height. And we want to use parameters to be able to generalize which friend the bunny can visit so we can make the bunny visit any of his friends um, at any time that we want. So the idea of the visit is make the bunny move close to his friend, say a greeting, jump over, or go around depending on the height. And at the very end, we're also going to make it so when we click on the animal, uh, the bunny does the visit method. So the first thing we want to do we're going to go back to editing our code now and begin editing code. And the first thing we want to do is we're going to create a new bunny method called visit. So in order, to, in order to do that, we have to go to this hexagon up here and go to the bunnies options. And we're going to add a new bunny procedure. And we're just going to name this procedure visit. And so the first thing we want to do is add the parameter that allows us to generalize this procedure. And so a parameter is basically um, an open variable that is waiting for in. So when we call this method later, this method is going to ask for input to that parameter. And in this case, that input is going to be the animal that the bunny is going to visit. And so Alice3 needs a name for this parameter and it also needs a type for this parameter. So this parameter is going to be an object, and specifically it's going to be, I'll show you right here, it's a certain type of object. So it has um, decimal number of types, whole number of types, boolean types, string types. We want a gallery class type, and there's lots of different kinds of gallery classes we can see here. And they're kind of in a hierarchy, so we want a type that is specific to our animals, but not so specific that we can't include all the animals in the type, but not so general that we also include things like the ground or the camera and stuff like that. So the ideal um, type for the parameter that we want is called, is just the S model. So this allows us to pass model classes to the parameter and all the objects, all the animals that we're working with are models. So that's good for us. And we're just gonna name this parameter now friend to visit because this parameter is going to represent the friend that we're going to be visiting. And so now we're going to add a code that allows the bunny to approach this friend. 
So the first thing we want to do, we want the bunny to turn to face his friend. So when we're working in the bunny's uh, visit procedure, the bunny becomes this, because we're now working inside the bunny's class. So everything you see here is this, is um this procedures, but this is referring to the bunny. But the, anyways, first thing we want is a this turn to face target. And the turn to face we can set as the parameter friend to visit, so we'll do that. And the next thing we're going to do, we want a, um, another turn to face method, but we want the friend to visit to turn to face the bunny. Oh, I forgot, I remember. I had to copy clipboard first. Then we can drag it down. Okay. And now we're going to make friend to visit turn to face this, which is the bunny in this case. Okay. So now the animal is going to be facing each other, and the last thing we want is the uh, bunny to approach the animal. So we're just going to make the bunny move forward. Um, we're going to make the bunny forward, move forward one meter. And now we're actually going to use a function to um, make the bunny approach his friend um, as exactly as we can. So we're going to go to the bunny's functions, this green tab, and we're going to get the get distance to function and we'll make it get distance to the friend to visit. So now we have all this code. Uh, Bunny's gonna move forward the distance to his friend to visit after turn after they turn to face each other. Um, and so now we need to call this new visit method that we just made. So we're gonna go back to my first method since it's, it's the default method that's being called by our events. And we're just going to drop in this new um, visit method. So it is a bunny method, so we'll go to the bunny um, from the selection menu and we'll just drag in this new visit method and we will make him visit the tortoise, the desert tortoise right now as a test. And so we can run the world now. And as you can see, as you probably would have already guessed, the bunny moves into the, t the tortoise. So we are going to have to um, do some fine tuning to our, func our get distance to function to make it so the bunny doesn't crash into the animals. And a safe bet to use would be uh, about minus one meter. So we want the button to move forward minus one meter. So if we go to the math, and we click on minus and minus one. If we click run now, and I'll full screen at this time. Now the bunny moves forward and he stops at a pretty good distance from the tortoise. And so that's it for part one. Uh, please come back to watch the rest of the videos in part two. Thank you.